Hi everybody, RMEP here for Explorminate.net and welcome back to our Stars and Shadows, our early access look at this interesting and fun little combat oriented 4X game. Now if you remember from the last episode we were able to finally destroy the resistance at um, I believe Vega 3, that's correct, and uh, pretty much mop up any resistance. Now I was planning on kind of just getting our entire fleets engaged in battle and wrap up this remaining pirate fleet here and this slaver out this little slaver outpost here which has got a command ship and two others but in the meantime uh, we were able to establish contact so I thought I'd just start the recording right here and show off a little bit more of the diplomacy. I would like to encounter them sir. Well looky here Greetings, Praetor Yurnik. It looks like we have met um, someone who looks a lot like the Ashtar. So what's uh, the Ashtar Imperials? So we're meeting uh, a different faction that, of the same race. That's kind of interesting. I think it had to do with the way that I set up the game uh, in the beginning. Um, let's look at the, some of the different things they think about us. Uh, there, we have no agreements with them. Um, Issues with me, our kind should stick together because we're the same race. We have a plus 15 reputation with them. And I agree. If I'm going to look like a large dinosaur with some cool implants and awesome red scarf, why not be friends with each other? Um, looks like they're at peace with the Orthon Conference, which is good. Um, got some diplomacy, so I'm going to increase my diplomacy and say, Sir, I would like to be part, uh, have an embassy with you. Looks like they've got nine planets, six stars, they've got six different fleets, and uh, wow, you know, they've got 51 million population, which is pretty good. Like to be, uh, you know, in cooperation with my Ashtar cousins. Nothing compared to my fleet size. I actually think that there's no, it's got to be, you gotta, it goes without saying that I've got to be the largest uh, faction in the entire game because it took so long to get these guys going. They probably ended up having a ton of pirate fleets next to her, but that's okay. Um, should be, I got 40 influence here plus 2 per turn for the different embassies that I've got. So that's the way it goes is that the more that you have contact with enemy AI um, with the different factions, I shouldn't say enemy, I always say enemy because this game is such a combat orientated um, 4x game. I often just assume that of course everybody's my enemy. But um, I digress. We should establish a cooperative research agreement um, or assign a, a trade charter. Let's see if we'd be interested in signing a trade charter. Our ports are open to your merchant vessels. I'm told our citizens are excited by the prospect of exotic Ashtar goods. Is there anything else you'd like to discuss? Right on. So then this is the way that the game is kind of set up when it comes to diplomacy is that the more that you interact and sign deals or embassies, the more that you get uh, influence per turn. And then you can use that influence to further yourself in terms of creating different trade routes, etc. So and in like here, under the Ashtar Imperial Agreement, it looks like we've got a trade charter, f uh, 12 foreign trade routes at one per turn. Per I'm guessing that's just one deal with them. So it looks like we're generating quite a bit of buildings for trade. 91, that is exceptional. Um, and I'm interested in a trade. And this is the trade window because we haven't had a real chance to show this off. We can see what uh, I've got and what uh, Hadura has got. It's got lots of metal, lots of planets. I'm kind of curious. Let's just see what it would cost to take a planet. Let's pick one that's got a low population. There we go. Um, yeah. Okay, so th what we can do is we can propose things, say never mind, or this um, kind of um, balanced measurement tool in the bit, and the, this little rudimentary scale is uh, telling us that he wouldn't be interested in any of that. So let's see if oh, he's not interested in that either. I'm gonna give, me, give me an annual payment of, let's say, 10 gold per turn. What would you like for that? Oh, doesn't look like he's really interested in trading too much with us right now. Maybe as our reputation gets higher up there, because right now it's doing good. Let's see what the different factions, let's see the Orthon Conference, what they have to do. We'll contact them. Ooh, okay. 
So we have an embassy, of course, like we mentioned before. Um, issues with them, they respect our dedication to science. Our 15 reputation is uh, up. Um, unfortunately, our, we're kind of neutral with them. We don't have any issues. They do look like they're starving for metal, though. They've only got 10 metal in their reserve, six ships, seven planets, and they're at war with a hostile and unknown entity. <laughs> oh. Being the merchant that I am, I will see if you've got, if you're low on something and I am high on something, you can see here that I've got 1,700 um, metal coming in. Perhaps we should do a trade. Let's see what they would want for 800 metal. Uh, nothing. How about 200? What would you like for 200? Impossible. Hey, it's just, uh, nobody's really interested in trading, unfortunately. I wish I could show off a little bit more of that. Uh, maybe it's just because my reputation with them has to get higher. Um, kind of wish I had uh, an indication of, of um, you know, is my, is my reputation going up with the Orthing Conference every turn because I have an embassy? Is it not? Is uh, why you ticked off of me? Kind of seems like the during the early access phase... Uh, diplomacy is pretty bare bone. I already, uh, but the thing I like about it is it fits in with the theme very easily. Uh, the game is uh, dead. Everything about checks and balances, right? Like I've got influence, I can spend influence. The more influence I spend, the more that I'll get. It's much like a resource, right? Uh, and it all has to do with um, dealing with the different factions, the major factions, and the AI. Okay, so there's not much for us to do there, unfortunately. So what we can do is we've uh, contacted. The Oh, it looks like they've uh, we've contacted the other Ashtar uh, planets, so we can kind of see where they're coming from. Does look like uh, the Othorin are green, and they've got a couple planets here. Ooh, even a space station. One thing I don't like though is as I'm mopping up all of these different planets, they seem to be coming in and invading them, which is not good on my books. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our big boy fleet and show off a little bit more combat. Um, you can see here I've got my heavy cruisers, my escort carriers, and of course my workhorse um, destroyers. Other than that, I do believe we've got a transport that we will just get back into the pool because we're not planning on invading anybody. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we're quite the actual beast when it comes to this small map size. I don't really see us getting too much involved or too um, too challenged by anybody. Okay, new technology. Okay, we got rapid fire lasers. Well, I'm not really concerned about that. Habitable domes. What does that give? Allows colonies on hostile environment worlds. Huh. Seven turns. I'll take it. We got native inhabitants on the what's this uh Casatel Casatel oh it looks like we've got a colony glacier type which seems very strange for a cold-blooded animal but hey whatever floats your boat um I do believe we've stumbled upon the other AI faction um, what do we got here everybody seems to be doing either research trade. Caster 9, I'll uh, see if I can't get you build in, let's say, a couple more destroyer ships. And by the way, getting on to the queue, it, you choosing the right click button is incredibly uh, helpful. So thanks for the comment section below, everybody. Um, I appreciate it because that has been a, a little bit of a time saver. Okay, attacked by a theorist. Before that, let's go contact is established. Let's see what we got here. Ooh, the Gree Mac Empire. Now, you remember the Gree Mac uh, have splinter factions that have, of course, been, uh, you know, evil slave traders. So, um, kind of curious what are how this affects our reputation. So, the Gree Mac Empire. Uh, my first impression is my reputation is good, but our people are ancient enemies. Ooh, minus fifteen percent. Um, or minus 15 reputation, probably because I kicked the little bit tatas out of them on uh, the last planet that I invaded. Was that Vegas 3? Yeah, yeah, that's mine. Especially with my new fleet. Uh, your military might is most impressive. He's impressed by my military. But we're concerned about your rapid expansion. There's nothing rapid about it. Is I've been in, I've been rapid expanding the entire time. And it does look like that's what uh, the Thorin Conference, they're currently at war with them. 
I'd love to get an embassy with them, but unfortunately I don't have enough influence. So I'm going to wait a couple turns and try to get an embassy just to see how much they... what the Grimac Empire has to offer. In the meantime, we're going to show a little bit more combat. Why not? Defend. And it does look like what we've got here. We've got... Destroyer, frigate, and I'm guessing this is a troop transport of some type. Ah, well, it doesn't stand chance against our fleet. I love these, uh, the rail guns. Once they get into range, they're just so devastating. And I haven't seen an enemy faction, a ma minor or major, that can come close to defeating that. Okay, here's a little destroyer. Ooh, sweet mother of pearl! If there was ever a, a sound in a game that got to put that hair on the back of my neck shooting straight up, it's that sound. Sweet. Wow. I love the sound effects and I love the old school graphics in this game. I gotta say that um, the whole combat system here is really well thought out. Uh, I hope it's expanded upon and um, I hope it's uh, really well checked and balanced by the time the uh, the game comes to final release because there's something special here. It's definitely old school. It's definitely you know fun to play. Whoa! <laughs> and uh, it's a treat. I would love to. And unfortunately, we won't be able to do it too much in this let's play or let's try. But can you imagine what this game would be like? Played on hard with two monster fleets you know just emerging and uh, really getting after each other like it, it could be very strategic especially with the different missiles you can shoot with the point defense system the shields versus armor you can even do boarding parties yeah I think that the um, in, a, in a time where in 2016 a lot of games are shying away from really robust combat mechanics you know a lot of times they're either non-instanced um, you know you're sh you're basically firing one blob against another blob and you're hoping for the best uh, or it's done in an instant where you can't really d um, have a lot of direct control and, I, and the argument of is is kind of both ways you can sit there and say well you know the um, you know I want to play as the Emperor I don't want to play as a fleet commander and I get that and this is the game that's kind of taken a little bit down you're, you can it's it's shy enough that on uh, uh, the amount of micromanagement and scope that you can play both feel comfortably and if you can imagine it although this is um, you know spanning over to a six video this is actually you know a game that I've played for maybe three to four hours give or take maybe five so you can see how quickly these games can roll upon like you could easily do a game a night if you had a couple hours you were got home from work had a little breakfast for dinner because you're crazy like that IHOP style and you jumped on you can actually have you know start off from a single planet in a colony ship and be the intellect uh, the intergalactical despot if you wanted to control the entire universe as you saw fit and having um, enough mechanics here to keep it interesting I definitely think it's a lot of fun so what does our derelict colony have to say Okay, what do you want there, derelict colony? Oh, they're not gonna say much. Okay, that's, we have victory. I don't need to see the summary, unfortunately, because I know I'm kicking butt and taking names. All right, um, what do we got here? Another fleet. I don't know if I really wanna get too deep into that. What I wanna do is focus on diplomacy and I wanna use the diplomatic window. Now that I've got enough um, influence, I'm gonna contact the Grimac and say, I'd like a diplomacy, sir. And he would say, very well, we shall send our diplomats to your home world and provide the facilities for you to do the same. Anything else? Okay. Wow, he is a joke, an absolute joke. He's got two stars, three planets. He's got a fleet of three no money, barely any money in the coffers, and absolutely no metal. So obviously the the war between them and the Orthuran aren't going well for him. Um, his race is generally displeased, and he thinks of me as neutral. So, unfortunately, although I have plus four per turn, doing anything it seems in this game requires quite a bit. 30 or more. Yeah, I'll disconnect from you. 
contact. Yeah, 30 seems to be the base of what my influence has been able to do or to achieve. So that's the kind of basics of it. Um, I think the higher levels of diplomacy are something that's going to be implemented later on in e, uh, early access. Um, I would like to see uh, like a non-aggression pact or even maybe an alliance because I think that's one thing that a lot of 4X games haven't um, been able to really establish is, is um, an alliance system. Uh, Stellaris has it and uh, sometimes it, its implementation and its um, bureaucracy feels chunky and clunky. Uh, I know that I kind of talk them way back in, you know, when it comes to different games. Uh, the original Star Drive had a cool system where if you were, you know, just absolutely steamrolling an, an AI uh, to the point where they could, you know, they knew there was just no chance, they would actually submit to you, like become your vassal, but essentially integrate to, right into your, your, um, into your empire. Uh, I've also had that happen in, in Galactic um, Civilizations 3 where I've been fighting an enemy AI. They begged me for peace. I said no way and they actually offered themselves to the my second rival who I was in a cold war with and expanded their empire by some 30%. So I love those mechanics because it changes the entire game and the makeup and it's all done essentially through the diplomatic channels, right? He, he asked me for peace and he begged me for, for mercy. I said no. He's like, well guess what? He straight up did the Cardassian thing that the Dominions in Deep Space Nine. If you don't haven't watched Deep Space Nine, watch that. Okay, everybody, so I think this is going to be my last episode of the Early Access um, for Stars and Shadows. Like I said, it's a game I really enjoy, and I can't wait to see how it progresses through the Early Access into version 1.0. Uh, if you're interested in, in you know looking at this or purchasing it, uh, I found it to be uh, very stable. Um, I haven't had a single crash. It, you can see I don't, I'm not running a powerhouse of a system. I'm running like a 960 with a an i7, you know, uh, 2600 processor. So it's not even a flagship. Although that processor is overclocked, like I said, it's not. I'm not running into any lag or any issues. You can see nearly every turn's done instantaneously. Uh, when in terms to of, um, of gameplay, you can see that uh, almost everything has got some type of placeholder in, in, or it's uh, mechanics that are in place that are just going to be refined later on, uh, including um, expansion, uh, explore, exploration, minor factions, the combat system, the ship builder, and diplomacy. Uh, so if you were going to jump into this game, I would say if you're an early access fan, you think you can probably add a lot in terms of to the conversation when it comes to bug fixes, balances, or just major suggestions, I would say definitely pick it up. Now if you're watching this video and you're going, ah, I don't like early access, RMP, I'm just, it's not my gig. Well then definitely keep your eye on this because if you're looking for uh, a fun 4X game that doesn't take itself too seriously, that has a great combat system in it, this is definitely going to be, this is going to scratch your itch. And especially when it's coming out, uh, it's released in early access against huge tyrants that are coming out right away. This is being uh, filmed in early October so you'd know that early access for Star or um, Endless Space 2 is coming out and Civilization 6 is coming out this month as well. I hope it doesn't get lost in the wayside because um, this little gem uh, has got a lot to offer for a 4X fan who particularly loves combat, conquering, and kicking butt and taking names. Okay everybody, I really hope you enjoyed this early access of Stars and Shadows. Keep posted uh, on our forums, uh, on our website, exploreminate.net, our forums uh, on the Steam forums for Exploreminate for all of the best 4X news, and especially when it comes up to some of our uh, Let's Plays, Let's Tries that are going to be coming out in the near future. So this is RMP saying thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next time.